We are trying to tilt the keg. Together, we are JP Adventures 19. We keep taking it apart. <laughs> or trying to. Start putting it back together again soon. Go, Patrick. And we snapped the head off again. <laughs> the other part is still stuck in there, which is not ideal. But at least it happened now and not on the road or somewhere else. It's a new day and it's a bit windy, but we don't have to work today, which is great. So we continue taking the front apart. Look at this. We are still trying to take the front bumpers off, but it doesn't work. <laughs> It's a pain, so it's completely loose, not attached anywhere. But the light just wouldn't fit through the front or the back, so that's a bit weird. Now we're just trying the, the other side because, you, as you know, the um, the mock's never sy symmetric. So now we're doing the other one, and because our Unimog is a special one and used to be armored, there are holes everywhere that the previous owner just filled with some bolts and we're taking them all out and we'll make it nice and flat we'll actually we're planning on um, sealing all the holes so it doesn't look like this <laughs> and also as you can see um, our front grill looks a lot different than all the others so there are no cutouts all the way through they're just on the side of the radiator all the little bolts are out so that's great we might even leave them because we figured or we found out there are little threads in there i'll give you a better look later um and so we might as well just fill the holes again in case we need to power the mock at some point <laughs> and now since we're not making any progress on the front bumper and the light we decided to take off the mud guards because we are going to go for bigger tires and especially wider tires and to keep it road legal we have to widen the mud guards and it was pretty simple just took this bolt off and then you can slide it back because it's just hooked on here, here. yeah and you have to take the bolt out under the stair or under the step and then wiggle wiggle and it's off <laughs> At least something that was easy, Patrick. <laughs> so now we're taking the elephant ears, <laughs> off, which didn't go well. <laughs> and now the head snapped off. We can really recommend the ICT L10. It's a lubricant penetrant and it works so much better than WD40 or all that kind of stuff. And it's actually WA made. It says Australian made and owned, but it's WA made. And we are definitely not sponsored by them or anything. We just love their products. This one's really good, as well as the rust converter we've been using. I think it's called R10. Yeah. So yeah, if you need any of that, definitely check them out. Are you wearing your safety boots? Yeah. 
Australian safety boots. Australian safety boots, right there. Patrick. <laughs> This side will be a lot more work that we have to get done because the head came off. So the whole, what is it, M16 bolt is yeah. still in there. Not ideal. But luckily this side is looking much better. Come on, go do your, <laughs> go do your dance again. No. Go do your dance again. <laughs> So I just got the light out because I took it apart, which was pretty simple. Someone's done it before. Um, so I pulled this part out the front. We just unclipped the wires and then I flipped this or I rotated it 90 degrees and then it fit through here. One out, six more to go. <laughs> And now, off with the front bumper! <laughs> it's taken way too long. And in general, this side is our more rusty side. The other side is, is alright. But on this side, all the bolts are really stuck and rusted. And Ooh. How happy are you, Patrick? <laughs> Finally! <laughs> so everything's off except for the winch and the elephant ears. The mud guards are off. Looks pretty, pretty weird. We found out because we messaged another Unimog owner and they're so helpful, which is really good. So um, we found out we actually have to pull out this pin in order to be able to remove the ears, which is not the answer we were hoping for and makes it again more complicated. But it's a Mercedes, so what did we expect, Patrick? <laughs> so let's do it! So here's what we did. Um, we put some lubricant on it. More like a ton. A ton of lubricant in here. And then we hammered it in and then we used, how do you call it Patrick? Pry bar. This one. And Pro bar, pry bar. Yeah. It was moving slowly, slowly, slowly. And now we're using a big pipe, put it onto this part of the pin and now it's moving. Because at first when we did that, it was just bending this little pin. 
So you have like a crowbar. So it's a good sign, it's moving now. We put it in here. But first, we put some wood underneath and it's like clamped in there really tight um, to give the wind some support. And we take the pin out. Look at this! It's off! <laughs> so at the end we didn't have to pull it out completely, just far enough that we could wiggle it out. This but one. I'm gonna take it out now and wire wheel it so it's nice Look and shiny. Look at it. Rusty, greasy. Mm. Patrick wire wheeled the pin. And Put some molly grease on it. It's all covered in white molly grease. And now it's gonna go back in. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> it's too easy, Patrick. <laughs> and now the challenge begins. <laughs> we have to get this huge M16 bolt out of there. The head snapped off, so Patrick will try, will try to drill, drill it out pretty much. We'll see. The most important part for now is that this part comes off so we can take off the elephant ear. And we'll figure out the rest eventually. Somehow. Yeah, we'll see if it works. Patrick is not patient anymore, so he's using the angle grinder now on the cutting disc. And his plan is simply to go through here. Right there. We'll see if it works out. Be careful, Patrick. Yep. Because if you remember the other day, a cutting disc pretty much exploded. And yeah, wasn't fun. It looks like it's loose and the ball is cut off. This is what it looks like underneath. <laughs> it's pretty stuck, especially here. And the bolt, as you can see, is still in there. So that will be our next fun job, getting this bolt out. Patrick's favorite job. Patrick, the same with these ones. <laughs> Three. Three. So this one, this one, and that one. Three that out of open. four snapped off. <laughs> but it's only this passenger side that's really bad. It's actually the same on the chassis. So when you can see, there's a bit of rust forming again. So we'll take all that off again, treat it, paint it again, because it's so much fun. <laughs> and then if you look at the passenger side, it's pretty much uh, at the driver's side. There's pretty much nothing. And also, we put back the second step and so because we want to tilt the cap and we need this point and this point and then we will bolt something like a bar that's going to go in between and hold the cap up until we can, so we can work underneath because it's supposed to be good weather for the rest of the week. <laughs> Which is incredible because we didn't have that for like half a year, pretty much. So yeah, we're pretty excited. Today is a very exciting day because we are trying to tilt the cab. <laughs> so right now we're taking everything out and then we'll have to unbolt all the points that we have to. I'm not sure where they are. Patrick knows, hopefully. And then we'll get the forklift out and try to tilt it, which will be exciting. <laughs> We've never done this before. And 
there are four balls that we have to loosen. This is the first one. It's so good to have a huge breaker bar. <laughs> This is the second one. And then there are two more on the other side. It's the same like on the driver's side. There's one back here and one in here that you have to take out as well. Now we're taking care of the hooks. There is one on each side. And first, which we already did, was taking the pin out. So there is this. This pin is stuck in there and then secured with the pin on the other side. So we took it all out and now we have to put this up here. And then the pin back in. getting the pin back there back in is a bit of a pain because it's not symmetric so there's less space on this side less space on this side yeah than on the other side now it's back in and are you ready Patrick? Oh. should I get the forklift? No. <laughs> are you scared? No. <laughs> is that all you can say? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we took the hood off completely as well, and you don't have to take out the air filter, but we took it out anyways. You have to make sure this is loose and sometimes you have to unclip the coolant lines for the heating system back there but ours are loose somehow like they're not clipped in anywhere and then we attached a chain to this little ring back here that can tow and lift way more than just a cab we towed actually we towed out the unmark with this and obviously we're using our favorite tool the forklift <laughs> and now we needed a lot of luck and yeah we'll see if it, if it works out and we got the tip that maybe we have to move the alternator because it might not get past it we'll see we'll do it really slow and check all the time and see what happens also like a scary thought that this whole thing basically stays there and the, just the cat moves on top of it Oh, I'm scared. Oh, it's moving. Oh, off we go. This is where the cab's sitting on. This is one of the mounts. This is the amount of space we have underneath right now, which is a lot. We can barely reach the top of the underside of the cap and we want to redo it, so we might as well just leave it like this, Patrick. And also, 
We lifted it to a point where we didn't have to move the alternator at all. So this part made it over it. So it's not this tiny little corner back there. I can show you from this side as well. So it is right there, this bit. That will touch probably. But since we don't need to lift it all the way, and this is already pretty good, should be sweet. Looks like the wasps made themselves at home already in our mug. It's not good. You're not supposed to be here. Look at this. Since we can't leave the forklift like this for a couple of days, obviously we still need it uh, in the packing shed and everywhere. We want to build something like a rod, something like a metal thing, metal bar that goes in between here and here, like the original cap jack. And we already got the right bolt to put for here. So now we just have to cut it and drill the holes and make it fit to this height, to this exact height. We decided to take a 40 by 40 SHS. This is three mil. You could use two mil probably as well. This is just one side that we cut off the balcony frame 1.0. <laughs> so we'll cut it to the right length now. Let's go. We actually just had the idea, because you stick it in at the top, you pull, uh, you put the ball through, but at the bottom, you basically just stick it on there from the side. So we had the idea of just leaving the bar this long, and then we will actually put multiple holes in it, like let's say every 15 centimeters or something like that. So we can use the bar in like different levels, so in the uh, when the cap is lifted really far up or just a little bit, you know, whatever you need. So yeah, it's actually a good idea. I'm I'm happy with it. So we'll do that. We'll just drill a bunch of holes in there. Also this morning we received an email from Payam Data Recovery that they can't recover anything. So I was a 95% chance that they can get everything back and we are one of the 5% where they can't get anything back. So we'll send it to a different company now that's actually like, that has a cooperation with the, the brand of the external hard drive, which is a Western Digital Ultra, so it's USB-C port. And then we'll see, but it doesn't look good, which is so annoying. Aren't we lucky? so lucky yeah i woke up and the first thing i saw on my phone was this email with the title bad news oh my no really <laughs> this is what it looks like so the SHS 40 by 40 is in here. We grind it down a little bit of the side so it would fit easier. And then we have this huge bolt going through. And now we just have to measure where we want to put in the holes on the other side for the pin so we can stick this pin into the bolt, into the bolt as well. No, so we can stick this pin into the SHS as well. bar is in there so that's an M20 bolt that goes all the way through this is our SHS and it's stuck on here as well and now we will slowly lower the forklift and see what happens and hopefully it does hold it up and doesn't crack or jump or whatever <laughs> all right moment of truth Lou, 
loose. Yeah, it is loose. And the cabin stayed where it was, so... It's working, Patrick! Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> Something that actually worked out the first time we tried it. Yeah. So good. <laughs> it works and we're really happy with it, but just for some extra safety and to make sure it can come off or nothing can happen because we'll be working a lot underneath there because there's so much rust. Um, we'll put underneath one or two echo pops as well just to, make, to be sure and then we can actually remove the chain and the forklift so it can go back into the packing shed. This is it for today, but next week we will show you how we restore the underside of the cab because there's this really common rusty spot that pretty much every mug has. Um, we got rid of it. We'll show you how we did it. And also we finally start with some woodwork. Yeah, that's favorite. For I, now. We'll I can't see how wait. Long that lasts. Yeah, I can't <laughs> see steel anymore. I'm so excited for the woodwork. So stay tuned and see you next week. <laughs>